So hi, Oliver here, Micropunter here. I've got a question today and I consider this question actually a little bit difficult to answer. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I spent a few hours thinking about it. Well, let's get started. Here it is. Hi, I'm a new university student that started to take up microscopy as a hobby, but I find difficulties in collecting samples to make specimens because I live in Saudi Arabia and it's hard to find ponds, lakes, moss and places where water samples can be collected. Can you advise me? How should I collect water samples to see the microorganisms or is there any way to do that in my region? Thank you very much in advance. Hope you the best. Thank you very much uh, for the question. And uh, I'm going to um, yeah, answer the question in two parts. In the first part, I'm kind of trying to avoid the answer a little bit, uh, but uh, in the second part, I might give you some recommendations here. And the first uh, answer is, the not satisfactory answer is, is, don't observe those things then because they are not part of your environment. Let me explain, let me explain. Um, I need to get a little bit philosophical here. At least for me, one of the reasons why I like uh, microscopy as a hobby is, is because it helps me um, explore and understand my immediate environment in a different way. Um, I basically, I take samples that I find every day in my immediate environment, I put it under the microscope and then I look at it and this helps me see the world a little bit differently. It helps me see the environment, my environment, my hometown, uh, yeah, the nature, in which I live, it helps me to see it differently. And uh, this is the reason why I put water samples and moss and, and uh, plant material under the microscope, because these are the things that actually grow in my region where I live. So it kind of helps me understand my environment a little bit better. Now, if you are in a region that has a different environment where you cannot find uh, water samples because it's a very dry area, then of course it's gonna be difficult for you to observe these things, but I encourage you then not to simply copy what I am doing in, for my region, but to define for yourself and to find things for yourself in your region that are typical for your region. So if you're living in Saudi Arabia, for example, I mean, I just checked uh, Google Maps. Um, well, I see, obviously, there is a lot of sand there. If I were living in Saudi Arabia or in another area where there are a lot of desert, I would put sand under the microscope and I would like uh, to actually find foraminifera, for example. These are the shells of uh, amoeba, single-celled organisms. Uh, they can be found in many sand samples. I would look for those things. If you go, uh, check in Google Maps, you can see that uh, different sand has a different color. I would like to find out now, well, why is that? Um, so what I want to say here is, is um, don't just copy that, what I am doing or what other hobby microscopists are doing. You're living in a different area and the fact that there are not many ponds and water samples in your area, um, is not a disadvantage, but simply see it as an advantage because now you have the possibility to define hobby microscopy differently for your region. Um, and there is now possibility for you to develop amateur microscopy yeah, in a different way, in a way that I'm not able to do because I'm not living in an area where there, which is where there's desert. So, do you see what I mean? Um, is this don't just um, do that what I'm doing or that what many other people are doing, but try to come up with uh, new observation ideas, things that I cannot even think of. I'll just give you a stupid little example. If I want to put a camel for under the microscope. I have to use a brush for shaving. That's camel hair. That's my only way that I can get to the fur of a camel, right? But you're living in a region where there are different animals, so why not try to um, yeah, put fur of different animals in your region under the microscope? Or insects that can be found there. Um, I, for example, here, this here is a, a wasp. Okay, yeah, and um, I put it under my stereo microscope to take pictures of, of this uh, because these are um, insects <laughs> that are living directly in my area and I just want to look at them under the microscope. But why not uh, find insects that are typical for your area and put them under the microscope? Or uh, the native plants that you have uh, growing in your region, maybe the pollen, make a pollen collection. So what you can actually do is, is you can, you have the opportunity to define amateur microscopy in a totally different way than the way that I have defined it.
okay because uh, this, or at least define maybe the word define is, is not the right word here but uh, at least uh, the approach is, it can be different um, so this is uh, something that I encourage uh, you to do and uh, if you have some problems of thinking up of different possible species some time ago I did uh, make uh, videos about 10 things that you can find in your home to put under the microscope this was simply just a little bit of a starter to motivate people to think a little bit outside of the box and try to put all imaginable and unimaginable things under the microscope because sometimes you don't even think that certain things can be put under the microscope for example if I, I don't know if I were to live in a, a deserty area um, I would probably uh, put a microscope slide I would probably put some glue over it and uh, I would wait for a sandstorm and then simply check how is the sand in a sandstorm different uh, from the sand that I find in other places um, as a matter of fact uh, this uh, as every now and then um, not so often it happens that there's actually rain coming raining here and there is a uh, sand from the Sahara um, in our rain here because it was transported by by the wind and by the weather so that would be something that I would be again interested because then all of a sudden it becomes part of my immediate environment um, so do you see a little bit what I mean is this um, don't uh, yeah, of course you can be inspired by the things that I put under the microscope, but 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 uh, try new things, okay? So this was the not satisfactory answer because I did not answer your question. And now um, I want to uh, address the issue. If you do want to observe water samples, then yes, it is possible. Um, but what I would in this case encourage you to do is, is to do a so-called enrichment culture. And this means that, is that you take a glass jar and in this glass jar you put uh, water. Don't use tap water. It could be chlorine. It depends a little bit uh, whether they put chlorine into the water or not. Otherwise, you just use drinking water that you uh, get in the bottle. You put it uh, in there. You add a little bit of uh, artificial fertilizer, uh, yeah, flower fertilizer, which you can buy in the shop. Um, and then what you need to do is, is if you do find uh, a water sample somewhere, um, maybe some standing water that has not been cleaned for some time, you take a few drops um, of this water and you put it into this glass jar with a fertilizer and then you wait for a week or two weeks and then you simply see what develops you put it into a bright place not too hot uh, usually no direct sunlight uh, but bright but no direct sunlight to prevent overheating um, and then you wait a little bit and then if you're lucky some algae will grow after a few days maybe a week or two weeks you have to wait and then you can put this under the microscope this would be one thing or um, that you go out indeed and you um, take a look for for dry plant material that you find somewhere um, and uh, sometimes it could be that there are um, yeah maybe um, still living things on there and that decompose it um, and when you add water it could be that they come spring back to life again um, only do that with plant material of course not with uh, any animal <laughs> material because you don't want to get sick so general hygienics are really important here um, so this is a, essentially an en enrichment culture is something that um, I would uh, recommend that you do um, and uh, final recommendation this uh, applies to pretty much everyone who's doing uh, microscopy is uh, document that what you find uh, so uh, uh, take pictures, uh, post them on YouTube, or Instagram or Facebook or wherever on your homepage, on your website, um, but document that what you find um, and uh, become um, yeah, an expert um, in your field of interest. Uh, that's also a recommendation that I have. Um, and uh, yeah, and I think if you do that, then uh, it doesn't matter where you live, um, it will keep you busy for a very, very long time and uh, you can learn a lot, lot of new things. Yeah, so that's simply my opinion on the whole issue. I'm uh, sure that uh, many of you also have other opinions. I encourage you to please leave your comments behind. Yeah, I wish you all the best. Uh, happy microbe hunting. And um, as always, uh, do check the links below, please. I do also link, uh, I also put a link to the uh, enrichment culture video that, uh, that I made some time ago. Happy microbe hunting. Bye bye. See you around next time.